Jak by? Majority of us are exchange students here in Taiwan. So most probably you will experience the same thing when you walk into China or when you walk into another country that is not familiar to you. So these are the possible programs that you could ask for if you walk into another into another country. One um, language courses. Hmm. So um <laughs> Although people might know English, it's still better if you know the language of the locals. For example, here in Taiwan, you cannot talk to everyone in English. Like, there would be some people who would understand English, or there would be some people who might understand you, but they, they are not confident to speak English. So you have to talk to them in Chinese. <coughs> so, recommend this at least one month training. So since you're already a professional, you might as well be used to learning languages and cultures. So one month would be enough to, for you to learn the language of the local. Next. Uh, you, the company should provide a cultural-related seminar, which should you, uh, which you should attend to just get some cultural awareness in terms of communication. For example, the direct versus the indirect communication so that you just have a feeling for the people why they do this and how they do it and what's the difference and just that you have an idea of what could be what you could face in a new country. Yeah, and then the third one is a contact database. So if you're a uh, foreign in a country, you would want to know the certain um, important numbers that you might need <coughs> if ever you would have an emergency or something. For example, if you would be sick or you encountered an accident or um, someone robbed you or something, you, you, sh you would need the police number, the, the hospital number, but more than that, you might need the immigration number and stuff like that. So you would need some database for you to be able to um, have a, a ready number just in case any emergency happens. Yeah, the company should um, assist you in terms of transportation, which means they should provide you with a visa um, to go to China. They should arrange flights, maybe also during your stay, that, so that you can go home, like once or twice a year, that you just can visit your home, your family, your friends. Um, yeah, and maybe they should arrange a car to get around there, or a scooter, or whatever. Depends on where you're going, what you need there. Uh, yeah. yeah, and then since you are new to the country, you also want to ask for accommodation, like for the company to provide you a dormant apartment and to make your life easier than you finding your own apartment. Since technically it was the company who sends you to, to China, so it is their responsibility to provide you uh, living, uh, living conditions, like good living conditions. And if they want to send, for example, a father or a mother of a family, uh, they might provide um, or might tell you where you can send your children to kindergarten. Yeah, very important. Or, or arrange an apartment near kindergarten, near school, so that they don't have a far way to go, or just that you you can take your family with you. Yeah. Uh, and then um, last. Lastly, I think, um, since you will be going out of the country, um, you might have, say, two years or three years in another country. So when you get back, you might be um, culture shock again with your own culture, like with what you were used to. So um, also, since you're leaving your job in your country, you're taking a job in another country, uh, the company must secure you a job when you return the, the, your home country because usually um, uh, some people might build their career in another country but when they go back to their home country they, they have nothing because it's been a while since they since they left the country. Alright, so Thank that's you. all for the presentation. Very good. Yeah. You ask a lot, huh? Or most of them for the living, the living uh, support. Okay. So 
like everyone here, we're going to talk about uh, how to make attractive actually like a job abroad for like an expatriate. So first, there was like the pre-departure training, and then there was like when you have abroad training. So under pre-departure -pre training, you actually have first of all to know what country you're going to deal with. So mm. having a cultural awareness training. So we are talking here about sending managers abroad, not like every single employee because we are in the human resources management. So training for managers, it's first where you have to know which culture behavior you are going to deal with. So you are going to train other people abroad, you are going to give orders to other people abroad all the time. So when you're going to talk with Mexican people or talk with Chinese people or talk with French people, most of the time it's only the same. Like you have to know how to deal with and how to manage them, lead them and everything. So then you're going to train about how to adapt to the country for yourself, of course, because, um, for example, just the food. How are you going to know about the food if you're not talking the language, like in China, and how are you going to know where to find the project you want and everything, so you just have to know about the country, the basics one, of course, at the beginning. Yeah. And then you're going to have lectures about the culture, that's mean like, you know, what people are coming and explaining to you what's going on and everything, or, all the testimony from expatriate, all the expatriate people that you can use for the, all they did with at the beginning and just explaining what you should do and what you should not do and like giving advice. Mm. Then the company should provide preliminary visits. That means like it's good to learn about what's there in the country, but it's even better to see what's in the country more than one week. Like if you know what's in the country, you're not just going um, like blind. You just know what you're going to see and where you're going to live. So you can just prepare yourself after because you already know. Yeah. Of course, uh, there is a language skill training, but I, I'm, it's not much of one one because most of the time you just have to speak English. Some companies won't speak English, and in this case, you should just have a really, really uh, ex um, intensive language skill training. But most of the time, if you just can deal with English, you can, of course, do business abroad like an expatriate. And finally, practical assistance, it's like transportation assistant and like visa preparation and finding um, some people uh, over there just to help you when you're going to get there and like the person just going to welcome you when you're going to be uh, at the airport. Mm. Most of this is like practical really <laughs> on the moment. Yeah, you're very prudent. <laughs> then there is like we find a model for cultural awareness training. So that's most of them, most of the models we found are always the same, the kind of same, so it's really mentioned. First, you need to talk about it, then you're going to know how you feel about it and how you should deal with it. And then when before going abroad, you're going to have like practical um, training, like an immersion approach. You're going to try it and you're going to have like a um, role game or even study case and know what you should do, what you should not do. And then you can discuss about what you did and what you should have done. So that's more practical and you're not just doing and playing and once you're abroad. Right. And while you're abroad, you need to work from your own organization. And the basic one is the financial, um, like the base salary from your organization that you can um, uh, stay in the same uh, living standards as back home. Mm -hmm. uh, plus that you might get some bonus just being abroad. And of course your organization has to support you uh, also by like mind that you, if you feel like feeling homesick or feeling that you're not really dealing with the right person, so they have to give you support. And also support your family and your uh, living, so they have to give you housing and uh, support your children's education and maybe kindergarten and your wife. Maybe they also give some, some money or salary to your wife to use. And then, of course, a uh, possibility to visit home. Um, as many times you want, or they have a time, time limit to that. And of course, benefits like insurance and health care and other social, social benefits. And maintain the communication with your home organization, your parent, uh, parent company. <laughs> and yeah, so that when you get back, so you know what's, what's happening in your organization, that maybe you can avoid the culture shock when you get back. Very good, yeah. So Peter, huh? Wonderful.
by culture briefing. So it's not only to introduce the country, but I also have this program where they send a bunch of potential candidates to overseas just to in China to stay for around like four days, two weeks. So you really get to experience their culture, to see whether their food is acceptable, is it to your liking. And then from there, then those who really stay at the end of, till the end of the project will will really decide, okay, yeah, they are um, they know that they can pick the two year assignments, then the company send them abroad. Because the company usually sends foreigners abroad for long assignments and usually um, if they are not able to adapt well to the country, they will ask to leave like yeah, three months later or six months later. And it's really caused by the company of bonds to, say, to send them abroad. So if the assignment was cut short, the company is really losing a lot of money. So next, as I said by the previous two groups, is to have basic Chinese lessons. And they also, it's also important to for, common, for HR to brief them about their career development. So if I return back from the foreign head from China back to my country, will I get promote, promoted or will I still get the same my same job? Or I don't even get a job at all. So I need to know them well before I even leave with you. Next is, I just need to know my reimbursement package. Um, so the important criteria is that the medical insurance, my apartment, whether it be subsidized by the company or do I need to solve it myself? Um, if I have a spouse, what about my allowance? Do they give them allowance or do they provide jobs for their spouse? Mm. Assurance, where do my children study? Um, do they even do I get allowance if I go to international school? Because from what I know, my friend told me that he sent his children to Singapore for education and an international school costs a bomb. It also, it literally costs about one third of the salary. So, and I also need occasional, occasional need for family visits as to fly back to my home country to visit my parents as a child. And lastly, the system for legal procedures such as the visa when I try to apply to China. From a few years back, I heard that it's really complicated to try to apply visa for China. They ask a lot of stuff. Mm. So I don't know what's the situation right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so during the stay in China, uh, firstly, we will we'll look at hoping to have an orientation of our country in China so that we we'll get to know the colleagues that you're working with and also the culture that you are in uh, for the company as well as the country. Uh, secondly, we're also looking at having a local value system such that um, the person can actually bring you around China and introduce you to uh, what all the whole China culture is about and as well as an uh, experienced shopper because driving in China is actually very dangerous and let's say you do not have the experience, it's actually uh, not very good for you. Yeah. Other than that, we're also thinking of uh, organizing like support group for foreigners in, in China, as well as also like professional counseling to overcome like cultural differences. Because let's say it is you, firstly you work there, then you're a manager, but you felt that like the people around you, they are not actually listening to you because of the difference in culture, and you're feeling very stressed. You need some form of professional counseling. So this is like a support program that is designed for you. It's if the need arises. And lastly is the performance evaluation because you actually need to uh, talk to your host company about so um, what should my performance standard be such that um, you will be sending me overseas and how do I perform over there. So these are all very important. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Very important uh, for this, all these pro yeah. This is for the working working support. Working support program. And some social support. Hmm. Important. That's very good. So, for the question, if you are given the opportunity to go work uh, in China, what types of support programs do you expect or ask for? So, if you see the foreigner, we ask for accommodation, of course, like a house or apartment, and the transportation from the uh, the airport too was in accommodation, but, but also uh, uh, in the town, around the town, and also the relocation uh, allowance. Uh, Secondly, they ask for Chinese trainings, of course, because uh, it's important to uh, they work with Chinese, it's important to have budget in Chinese, and uh, also uh, to live in the town is important to have budget. 
that is the company can also organize the seminar about uh, how to live in China uh, because they can um, know uh, uh, their life habits, for example, uh, how to buy uh, everything and uh, it can be uh, also how to find, I don't know, uh, a good babysitter, uh, it uh, can be everything about the day life. Uh, we can also provide uh, education elements for the children. Mm. So uh, to find a good school near to their poor place, or um, to find school uh, which uh, provide uh, different uh, language courses. Yeah. Mm. And uh, for before the, the trip in China, um, about different books like insurance, uh, visa, and bank accounts. Yeah, all these, uh, the living, right? Yeah. The living support, very good. And uh, the company uh, can help to find the expert experts uh, in contact. Uh, it's important uh, because uh, the foreigner uh, would like to have some, uh, like, uh, suggestion. Very, very practical. Yeah. Very practical. So if you are a, the CEO, right, in China, yeah, think about this, right? Always organize this kind of a, the free trip for your uh, expat expatriate manager. Yeah, they then can know the real situation of China. Yeah, wonderful. Next. Okay. Okay, so I'm with Ruth and these are some... Uh, yeah, please, my home. Yeah, you're right. Okay, so these are some uh, experts who will expect from the HR department. And there are two parts of it. Uh, first one is working environment, second one is uh, living environment. So first, uh, we, we hope that uh, we can have an environment where the, uh, the politics and the crime and the, the politics are stable and, and there will be less criminal uh, events because, you know, it, and if you work on, in, in, some, in some regions in China, if you work on the street, they will, you may be fucked or be uh, if you are a female, maybe you will uh, meet something, meet someone very strange. So you might need some protection uh, to to protect yourself. Uh, for example, you might have um, a, a safety card staying in your company or in the department you live in. And second one is a friendly and professional environment. Uh, this is um, what do you? But when a foreigner work, uh, works in the office and the, in my, uh, the people there may, may not be uh, so friendly to you, but they still have to, uh, they still have to uh, understand that because you are, uh, how can I say? I mean, even if you, uh, you don't like each other, but because you work in the same working place and you have, and, and you have to, even if you have horrors outside and you, you have to fight outside, but 
if you stay, if you step in the office, you have to understand that you have to uh, work together and you have to do your job together. And this is important and very uh, professional. And the third one is clean office. And uh, this is, and this is, um, it is important for some people because they, if the if the working place is not clean, and they cannot work very efficiently, and they can they, they can be one um, step cleaning the uh, the office every day, or it depends on uh, the needs of the the, the, the person. And fourth, uh, high tech uh, high technology. Uh, for example, you can uh, you might need a computer or uh, good. Uh, telephone devices to communicate with uh, your, uh, your, your your others to other steps or other companies and the fifth one health protecting you mean, you mean the infrastructure right infrastructure provide yeah. the, the, the very good infrastructure for your job for your working right? yes and, and you can communicate okay. uh, anytime you want and and health protecting methods and we know that in some industrial regions in China, they they have um, very uh, serious air pollution. So uh, we hope that we can get some uh, protection, uh, like like drugs, no, not drugs, like uh, 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 medicine, medical, me medical uh, support or something like a uh, hip body examination every year to uh, to help us uh, prevent getting some uh, cancer or uh, illness from, uh, from air pollution. Okay. And the sixth one, uh, multicultural society. And this is uh, especially important for people, uh, for uh, foreigners, because if when a foreigner stay in a camp, in the company where most of the steps are local and they might uh, receive some discrimination. So if you can have a multicultural society, this can uh, make people here work more uh, friendly and more efficient for uh, foreign workers. Okay. So the second part is uh, living conditions and some personal expectations and safety the social condition. And just as I mentioned last page, and we might need to say uh, a safety guard in your living apartment. And Can you talk more about the personal consultant? Okay? The personal consultant. Personal consultant. Yeah. What okay. uh, Personal consultant is like you when you move to a new environment and you might you might not understand the culture very well so you might need a person to teach you uh, things about the culture and it's and, and this this consultant is uh, sort of like a psych psychologist or a, a personal psychologist and maybe you have pro problems or you want to consult you want to uh, tell it uh, you have something to provide private in your mind and you can you have something to you have someone to talk to so this is for the individual need or for uh, working need uh, individual. Individual. Okay. individual. Oh, okay. So, uh, shall I finish the... Okay. I think that all the other uh, items are uh, given by other group in detail. That's it. Okay. Right. But the base page is the personal consultant. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Any other? Any more? Uh, health, I think health insurance is important because if you, if you don't have health insurance, then uh -huh. you might pay very expensive money to, yes. go, to go to the hospital. Yeah. Okay. And so basically, this is. Thank you. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Next. <laughs> Today we are going to. Hi, my name is Lena. And today we are going to talk about the uh, issue. Uh, if I have an uh, opportunity to go to China and what type of supporting program I expect it. First, I think housing is very important because um, if I have a somewhere and I don't have friends or any relatives there, so I will need 
behalf and the, the capital lady who can help me to find a good environment to live there. And the second is the to training. And because Chinese is my mother already, so I don't need it. But for some foreigner, it's necessary. Before they're living their home country, they have to learn some Chinese. So it will be more convenient for them when they living in China. And third is diversity in China. And I think it's also very important because uh, I think Chinese, China is a Western land, very different culture. So um, for example, the table manners are different. And uh, uh, people, people do the business and they are different, um, they are in different ways. For example, um, Chinese people, they take grandchildren very important and uh, some uh, social skills. And that is the ear bonus uh, is necessary. And before you uh, take this opportunity, you have to uh, make a deal with the company. And that one is the traffic expensive. But I think uh, it depends on the position because some people, uh, company will provide the car and driver, and some people uh, maybe the office only offer them the um, MRT tickets or the one round trip ticket or some uh, transportation. And next is the um, trauma support. Uh, if I work in China alone and there's no my friend, no my relative, then uh, I will miss them. So I need, maybe sometimes uh, I feel upset, I will need someone to talk. And maybe the uh, company they can offer me uh, this, this kind of support and insurance. I, it's very important if I have uh, any access. Um, if, if I have, if I'm sick or I have any uh, accident, I will need insurance. The next is the VIP section, uh, especially uh, medical care. Uh, this is my friend as an example. He used to working in China, and um, uh, one year he had a uh, tooth tooth ache, and when he go to the public hospital, then the doctor gave him too much medicine because he had um so Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> kidney, so uh, kidney, uh, kidney, uh, um, it's a very serious uh, illness. So, so that he had to come back to Taiwan and have an operation and ten years for half hour. And that's why it's the translation assistant. Uh, I think it's also necessary for foreigners, but not for me. Uh, uh, prepare training for any job skills like uh, what they need, for example, the marketing research or any support you may need. Um, that is uh, some details is, for example, these are supporting, that accounting, and cell phone. So, that's what I think. Calls a lot, huh? <laughs> Financial support. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Last? Last. Okay. And for my question, the people that are sitting in the next door in China, what type of support for one to do a special for? And when I do with this, training is very important. And not only people who move to China, and also need a provider. And we should give them some cultural, cultural training. And, uh,
and the third is uh, working mass well. We think uh, we should let the, the company should let the employees know uh, how to manage their job in China or how to uh, work with the others. And welcome. If um, if we come to um, work in China, we will prefer uh, the company are very nice uh, and take care of you. Um, they uh, maybe they can mentor. You mean the supervisor or mentor? Mm. Supervisor? Yeah. Okay. Uh, like, uh, have a supervisor who can lead you and uh, maybe write an uh, assistance and maybe buddy, like some, uh, give you some giving support. I'm I see many many uh, items have been uh, mentioned by our group, but how about the promotion? Promotion, I would say, um, uh, if you take this chance to work in China, and uh, you must make sure you have a career, right? The career development. Yeah. Uh, even if you come back to your own country, and you have a chance to keep your eye on your career. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is very good. Uh, can answer the question why China, right? If China is very important. Then after I return, yeah, maybe I got promoted to handle the the more uh, important job, right? Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, finish. Any other? No. No. Okay. Good. Thank you. Yeah. Very wonderful presentation by you. Uh, you consider a lot and ask for <laughs> more. <laughs> okay, ask more and you, you are successful opportunity uh, will uh, be more. Thank you, thank you for your participation.